Quavo involved in the robbery on a yacht in Miami. His two hitters went up to the boat captain. He told them that their time for that boat rental was over and that Quavo and them, they're going, we're going to take them right back to the loading docks. And that's when the dudes pulled out the hammer on the captain, the boat driver. And he said, if you turn this boat around, I'm going to throw you into the water with the sharks. That's when the boat dude was like, whoa, whoa, you got a big misunderstanding. Quavo and his people heard the commotion going on in the front of the boat where the steering wheel is for the captain to, to drive. And that's when he seen his two hitters go in there and they start waving the pole in the dude's face, telling him that he needs to give him the rest of the money from renting the boat that they want to get a refund. So he Quavo's hitter, his shooters waving the pole. He's waving the 45 to the captain, dude. And he's just hired as the driver. He don't even own the boat. So the dude was like, okay, okay, I'm going to go get you the money. He goes down to the little one bedroom that's in the bottom of the boat. He grabs a $5,000. He goes up. He tries to give it to the dude, and he already bugging out on a whole nother worker that's inside the boat. You got to remember, when the boats are big like this, these yachts, they already have multiple workers on them. They already got the guy who's driving it. Then they got the, the whole cleanup crew and the food people, the people who do the catering and everything like that. He was just working and they were trying to tell him, yeah, you only got 10 minutes left and we got to get back because the place is five minutes from here. So they're trying to turn it around. And that's when Quavo's hitters keep bugging out on them. They trying to tell them that they're going to go into the depths of the ocean or something like that. They just was mad about the fact that their rental was over and that they're not the ones who own the boat. And they kept telling them the rules like, yep, you can't spray the champagne on the boat. You can't shake the bottle and try to pour that pour it out for your homies or whatever he took the ace of spade bottle and he's like yeah i'm gonna pour it out for the dead homies and stuff and he starts pouring it out on the carpet of the yacht that's when the the boat driver was like hold on man you can't be doing that you gotta act like you've been here before man and they started spraying the champagne on the couch cushions and everything and he's like bro why you act like this your first time you gotta act like you've been here man you can't just be staying in the couch seats and everything like that and spraying the ace of spades everywhere he's like i'm about to turn this boat around and that's when he called the owner because the owner was trying to tell him that if they don't stop threatening the boat driver that he's gonna have miami pd with mike lowry and everything waiting for them when they get back to the beach and that's exactly what happened so when they get back to the when they actually is on the way they still in the water he signaled a coast guard to come the the feds pulled up with the coast guard while they still in the water they jumped onto the yacht the first thing they did is they see quavo with his dreads and all the jewelry on so they thought he was the aggressor so they ran ran up on him and that's why quavo was the first person to get cuffed he started getting detained and everything they start reading him the miranda rice and everything because at that point they already had the probable cause to get everybody booked inside that whole yacht because everybody they were not stopping the dude they they wouldn't tell him no they could have simply told him, hey, bro, no, 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 leave the dude alone, man. We, he has to turn the boat around or we'll pay for extra time on another boat. Like, let's go ahead and head back. They just kept letting the shooters and everything keep going inside the little booth. And the dude got scared. That's why he called the feds on him. And he called the owner of the boat. He said, yeah, somebody's trying to rob my boat right now. And so they came up thinking that it was some type of pirates on the boat. So they came up, got everybody, cuffed them, handcuffed them. They even brought out the um, pink cuffs and put it on Quavo and handcuffed them to the guardrail until they brought the boat back to the beach. When the boat landed, that's when they got Quavo off of it and they cuffed him again because then Miami Beach PD took over. And at this moment, they started questioning Quavo, like, yeah, who's the buddy? Who's your buddy that you came here with? Who's the dude that got the 45? Like, why is he bringing on him? And they start asking all these questions and everything like that. And they started separating Quavo from the people that he was with and then the people that they invited. And then all the girls was in another corner and they all gave conflicting stories. When they got all the stories and they added it up, all of the stories, storylines didn't match up. Everybody says something different. So they was basically trying to cover for the dude who 
actually up the pole on the driver of the boat because the fans wanted to know why he brought the why like who he is his id everything they want to know if his if that uh 45 was in his name or anything like that so this is the reason why they cuffed Quavo because they still had to ask him a lot of questions about it and so some people are saying that for Quavo to get off of this he might have told on his homie he said his homie walked in there and that he was the one that did it and so when they put Quavo in the back of the car they drove him around to the front where the whole group of the people was that was still getting talked to by the sheriffs and everything and they told him um can you point to the guy that was the one who did this and he pointed and he pointed directly at the dude that did it. And that's when they locked that guy up and released Quavo. Quavo got, they took the cuffs off of Quavo and took the same cuffs and put it on the other dude because he pointed at him. And so this is the reason why that they couldn't use the stories that everybody was given. One dude said that he was on the top of the boat and somebody said he was on the bottom. It don't even make sense. The dude said, nah, it was the boat driver that was trying to rob us and not the other way around. Everybody says something different, and this is why they handcuffed everyone, because they're like, okay, at this moment, all of y'all are saying something different, so clearly everybody's lying, and so because all of y'all are trying to lie to us, we're going to cuff y'all, and we're going to go by the stories one by one. If we really want to, we could charge everybody with this, so this is why y'all need to speak up right now and tell me who did this, or else everybody going down for it. Then it got real quiet. Reality hit them like, wow, if they don't start talking and saying what happened, then everybody gets wrapped up for this. That's when Quavo raised his hand. He stepped forward and he said, I volunteer to go first. They took him to the side, pulled him off. And once they once he told and pull, pulled up to the front and pointed at the dude, it was all over with. They took that dude in and took the other guy in and let everybody go home and gave him tickets for a warning for disturbing the peace on the boat. And so basically they got banned from that whole beach. They got banned from the boat rental company and they don't want them to come on board anymore. And this whole entire time, the dude was like trying to snatch the guy's chain and everything like that. He was trying to, he pit pocketed the driver, boat driver's wallet and took the money from him. And that's what they said was the robbery was because when the dude came up and he upped the pole on him and he said he wanted to get the refund, the boat guy was like, you can't get a refund. We already did. The trip is almost over. You got five minutes left. Ain't no refunds. And that's when the dude was like, okay, wait, wait right here. I got something for you. I got something for you. And he goes out, goes to the backpack. He gets the little mini Gucci backpack and he pulls out a big old scrap from it. He walk up to the dude and he's like, what you say? He puts a right chrome to his dome and everything like that. That's when the dude gets scared. And he's like, okay, you got it. You got it. You got it. Take whatever you want. You got it. He pulls his wallet out and gives it to him. He said he put, he had $3,000 in his wallet. So the dude robbed him for three bands right off the jump. Then he told him if he don't give him the rest of the money, he going to feed him to the sharks and, and make him walk the plank. Then that's when the dude was like, okay, well, shoot, I got to make it back home to my family and everything like that. So let me go ahead and give you the rest of the money from the room. And he goes down and gives him that. At the same time, when he went down, he pushed the button. And that's when the owner got notified and the feds got notified. So by the time that he was like, okay, let me count it up for you. Make sure everything is there. By the time he counted the money and gave it to the dude, the feds already turned their lights on. They flashed a spotlight right in the dude's face. Quavo gets up. They shine the flashlight on Quavo. And you can see his Quavo because he's got the chains. And when they put the flashlight to Quavo, the chains start reflecting. That's when they go to him first because they thought that that was he, they seen the reflection from the chain and the metal. And they're like, that must be the dude with the strap. Get him because it looked like he had the metal in his hand with the bracelets. The way that the Quavo had the bracelets on, it looked like he had a piece of metal in his hand. So they went and handcuffed him because they want to make sure that he's not the one that was actually threatening the dude. So all in all, he robbed them for thousands of dollars and everything. And Quavo was a part of it because he brought his homie. That was his homie to, he, that he invited and everything. And they didn't tell him to stop. Man, a whole, good thing it wasn't any worse than this. And you got to understand that Quavo got to start hanging around some better people. After everything happened to take off, Quavo's been hanging out with the wrong crowd, man. You know what happened to Jay Prince Jr. and them with the whole party and how Quavo got, or take off got 
taken out. And so now everything that happens around Quavo is bad karma from that situation. It's bad juju. And this is why people got to realize that at the end of the day, you got to open your eyes and look at the facts that this situation could have been prevented, man. If Quavo would have picked a more better group of people to be around, he's still taking dudes straight out the hood on these yacht trips and going to these extravagant places knowing that they're going to start fights and rob people there. And it's exactly what happened. They started the fight and they would try to rob the dude who was simply trying to do his job and give him a ride and let them have fun on the boat. But they had to ruin it for everybody. And so this is the reason why they put Quavo in the cuffs.